Jody Wilson Raybould, at the end of the day, did what she came to do, and that speak truth to power. And my God, was it riveting! I don't know if you guys watched it, but you know her her opening statement, especially, but even the way she handled the questions, both from the opposition and from her from her liberal colleagues, was was a masterclass. Um, I believed her position beforehand. I largely felt she was a credible voice, but you know, after seeing her perform, I think her credibility has has risen to new levels. And I think there are really deep questions to be asked about the Trudeau Liberals. I think that there was a couple standout moments. One was just the way she defended her own record, the way she, you know, summoned with passion, yes, but with with rigorous detail, the all the ways in which nearly a dozen high-ranking officials within both the 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 civil service and within the kind of Liberal Party um, put, in her words, sort of undue or extraordinary pressure upon her to try to make a decision about the SNC-Lavalin prosecution that was perhaps based less in what she felt was the correct uh, manner from a legal perspective and more what benefited the government in particular. She noted, for instance, Justin Trudeau himself saying, look, we have to do what's right for me as a Quebec MP and for the Quebec Liberal Party and for our Liberal MPs in Quebec. And for that reason, we have to be perhaps lenient on SNC-Lavalin. That sort of influence, that sort of interference is deeply problematic, deeply, deeply troubling. I think Wilson Raybould also um, did it, uh, summoned her, her lived experience in a very poignant way. Uh, you know, it wasn't the, the crux of her testimony. That was based in, again, the cold hard facts, timelines, details. I won't go into all of them here. You can find that in many other places. But it was when she said that, look, I'm an indigenous woman. I come from a family of strong female leaders. I know the history of this country. And frankly, it's one where the rule of law never applied to me and my people. It never applied to us. The government said they respected law and order and decency, and they lied. So as justice minister, I wanted to change things for the better. I didn't want to uphold the historical system of corruption in our justice system. I didn't want to do that. It wasn't fair when they did it to my, me and my family and my fellow indigenous people. And it's not fair when we continue to do it today. And that was extremely powerful. As was her, her defense of her character when it was attacked, not by the opposition, but by her, 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 her colleagues. And with colleagues like that, who needs enemies? in my perspective. So I think it was incredibly, incredibly effective. And I think that when juxtaposed to Justin Trudeau's uh, remarks, uh, I think she comes out clearly on top. She comes out clearly on top. And I think that there are more and more questions, not just for Trudeau, of course, but for the his key staffers, for other members of the Liberal Party, like Bill Morneau, for instance, who was brought up, um, for some of the top civil servants, there is a lot more we need to hear. And that's why I feel that in, in terms of the opposition remarks, um, perhaps Jagmeet Singh struck a more uh, effective note than Andrew Scheer. Andrew Scheer gave a, you know, a polished statement. He called for Prime Minister Trudeau to resign, but I feel like he perhaps overshot. One, tactically, when you call for a resignation, there's not really anywhere you can go beyond that. You've sort of played your trump card. Whereas Singh, I think, effectively has said that this underlines what the NDP has wanted all along, which is the need for a national inquiry, which includes talking to key figures like Trudeau, like his former principal secretary, Jerry Butts. We need to see and hear from these people because the reality is, is that we don't necessarily know the full story and we need to hear it. We need to hear what the prime minister knew and how deep this what what i feel is now clearly you know a case of of government interference to aid a company that is not only you know de seen as crucial to the liberal party's re-election efforts you know given that their need to 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 be strong in quebec but also a, a a company that has long ties to the liberal party that's made heavy donations to the liberal party that has in some cases made illegal donations to the liberal party the reality is 
is that we, we need to know more. We need to know how deep this goes. How deep is the rot within the Liberal Party and within, you know, potentially, scary as it is, certain elements of our, of our supposedly nonpartisan civil service? That's what we need to see. So I, I, I think that this was a victory for Jody Wilson-Raybould. It was a victory for the truth. And frankly, I think above all, it's a, it's a, it's a f- demonstration of the Trudeau government's absolute hypocrisy on two key fronts. First, Trudeau and many of his MPs have come out and said, well, look, you know, yeah, we probably did put a bit of pressure here and there, but we were doing it to save jobs and we were doing it to save pensions of those SNC-Lavalin workers. But, but let's be real here. The Liberal Party doesn't give one iota about workers and their pensions. They don't care at all. Because if they did, they would be working to save the pensions and benefits of workers at Sears and workers at Stelco who have been screwed over by our bankruptcy provisions that protect CEOs and stockholders and leave workers and their families out to dry. We wouldn't see liberal MPs like Bob Rettina literally telling pensioners that they can go fuck themselves doing that in the last couple days. Hamilton MP telling them that the steel workers and pensioners can go fuck themselves as they were kicked out of his office for demanding that action be made for to protect workers. Trudeau doesn't care about workers. That's a red herring. Because again, if he cared about workers, he wouldn't just care about SNC-Lavalin workers. He would care about workers in Hamilton. And he would care about workers in, at, in all the Sears locations across this country. And he doesn't. And he never will. He doesn't care about GM workers either. Not a chance. Perhaps bigger in this case was the fact that the liberals ran on such this idea of we're going to have a gender-balanced cabinet. We're going to run not only to give women positions and people of color and indigenous people positions in our government, but to give them meaningful positions and meaningful power so that their perspectives can, can, can make our country a better place to live and a more welcoming place. And that was a message I think a lot of Canadians supported. But as we see, when Jody Wilson-Raybould, again, who is inspired by that spirit that comes from her family and her community, and her indigenous heritage, wanted to uphold the rule of law, she was pressured unduly by, you know, Justin Trudeau and his key allies, the majority of whom are, you know, white European Canadian men. The the mask is off there. And the mask is further off in the fact that this government says they want to make a, you know, a meaningful path towards reconciliation. But what does it mean when, you know, the, the expertise of a credible and professional and, and stalwart woman like Jody Wilson-Raybould is constantly challenged by, by the government and by the prime minister and by the prime minister's office? What does that mean? And what does it mean when the prime minister talks about her using the word Jody, not referring to her, to her full title, while he gives men that respect? And what does it mean when the Liberal Party through quote-unquote anonymous sources, talked about Wilson-Raybould being hard to work with or being a little bit, you know, aggressive. You know, language that, you know, often is, is applied harshly and unfairly to, to women and, and racialized women in particular. It means that this government doesn't believe what it says. It means that this government wants to have the image of progressivism but wants to be the same old corporate liberal party that Canadians turfed in 2006 and that has been the liberal party since Confederation and earlier. This is not change. Justin Trudeau is part of the same old boys club. And now we can see it in full, full spades. So my hope going forward, I want to see Justin Trudeau under oath. If what we heard from Jody Wilson-Raybould is even partially true, He needs to resign. And if he won't go under oath, if he wants to obscure the public's need and right for transparency, he needs to resign. Bill Morneau needs to resign. The chief, the the clerk of the Privy Council needs to resign. All of his chief staff need to resign. And frankly, a good chunk of that cabinet may need to resign. The rod is deep. And unless Justin Trudeau can prove otherwise, we need major change. 